Welcome, friends, to the Week in Truth number 43. QAnon Russian Style with Arid Borsch. So, what are we doing in the truth movement apart from making Russia great again? There is an avalanche of bullshit. So, among the things that I've heard, topics of videos and so on, Putin is draining the Ukrainian swamp. He's blowing up secret bio-warfare labs. Now, I've always thought Putin was quite an academically clever kind of chap. Would he really blow up a bio-warfare lab, releasing all those germs and viruses into the world and starting a global pandemic again? I think probably not. Apparently, Putin is fighting the Casario Mafia, according to Charlie Ward, the fat knacker. Uh, I never heard of the Casario Mafia, but I, of course, have heard of him now. But I sincerely doubt that. And the old chestnut, Putin is rescuing trafficked children from underground bases. And what does Putin say himself? He says he is freeing Ukraine from Nazis and nationalists. Well, if he was so interested in that, he could set a cruise missile going towards Tommy Robinson and bomb the fuck out of that little check suit wearing twat. I wouldn't mind about that. But invading an entire country mm, seems a bit extreme, Vlad. So, now, I speak a little bit of Russian. It's not very good Russian, and MI6 certainly wouldn't be interested in employing me with my skills of being able to count from 1 to 20 and order a pizza in a restaurant. So um, if you're going to say that about me, that I'm some sort of agent, you know, I wouldn't be living in a shithole in Kent if I was that. But anyway, the one thing that I did note from having watched a lot of retro Moss films is that... Um, Putin yesterday addressed his television audience as Tavarish, which is a word that is somewhere between comrade and friend that was popular in the um, Soviet Union. So if you ask me, Putin's aim is like some nostalgic vision of reuniting the Soviet Union countries. But I have to think... You know, because there is only one conspiracy, if you ask me, and that is that the world is run by evil people. And I thought that Putin might be doing what Klaus Schwab told him to. Now, this meme shows you exactly what I mean. Here we've got um, Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum meeting with Putin and meeting with um, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, meeting with Joe Biden, and meeting with Justin Trudeau. Some of these people are what he's called the um, young, promising wave of leaders that he's been interacting with. So Brian goes on to finish this meme with showing uh, Schwab with Trump. Team Schwab, it's a blip. Big club and you ain't in it. Okay, so I think this shows you how all these people are connected and who is pulling the strings. We certainly know that Schwab is involved in this. So this whole Russia-Ukraine thing is part of their plan, whatever that may be. It's for us poor lemmings to try and work it out, isn't it? So I'll just thank Brian for this meme. His uh, site here is uh, High Impact Flicks. He's on YouTube, BitChute, Odyssey, blah, 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 etc. He's also got some backup channels you should probably subscribe to. I quite like Brian, but, um, you know, as much as he goes on about left and right is a divisive and old paradigm that we need to look beyond. Um, five minutes later, he's banging on about goddamn commies and libtards and, you know, so he's pretty right wing himself. And in the same way as I will never be anything other than 
a left-wing person because I care about the the whole, you know, the idea of society and civilization and us all looking after each other, I think, is the best thing, not selfishness. Anyway, so where have I got these ideas from? Let me show you a few of these videos that are circulating. Whoever does the um, thumbnails on these is pretty good. I like their Photoshop skills. They're quite amusing. But here, here we go with the biolab theme. Uh, Putin tells the world he's um, stopping Nazism in Ukraine. Biolabs again. The funny thing about this one is that it makes out that Ukraine were trying to make a bioweapon to depopulate Russians. Now, this is uh, doesn't really meet with much credibility, let me explain why. Because Ukraine and Russia have been very close historically, part of the Soviet Union, of course, Ukraine. So Ukrainians and Russians have married and had children. Uh, genetically, they're very similar to each other. So any bioweapon that killed Russians would probably kill a lot of Ukrainians. A bit uh, self-defeating, perhaps, making that kind of bioweapon, eh? Also, the populace of Russia has actually been decreasing steadily over the decades. So their population is actually decreasing and has been for a long time. Don't need a bioweapon to do that. They're seeming to manage perfectly well on their own. This is the one that's really offensive. The idea that the whole thing is a hoax. I'm sick of the idea of hoaxes in, in truth because it isn't. You know, anyone who thinks truth is not infiltrated with bad actors, as they get called, is just naive. Um, at least about 50%, 60% of what comes out in the truth movement is absolute bullshit. Uh, and this is just another example. I have some... Um, Russian friends, I have some Ukrainian friends, I have um, friends of all sorts of different nationalities. I have one particular friend who lives in Kiev who's an archaeologist and uh, him and his wife decided to stay. They're the wrong side of 50. They can't be bothered with evacuating to anywhere. And he went and signed up with what they, you know, their equivalent of the National Guard or whatever to get himself a machine gun. And he's going out and working he works three nights and then he has a night where he rests. And, uh, you know, I, it, I'm gutted when I see things like this because I know this is amazing how people are responding in Ukraine. They're being so courageous. Uh, I know the history of Ukraine as being part of the Soviet Union was one in which they were starved. They were sent to gulags. They were... Um, sent to Siberia to live, you know, they were basically exiled from their motherland of Ukraine. It was tough times and they don't want to go back to that. Um, most of them are not nostalgic and wearing rose-coloured spectacles about those days. There are, it's similar to the situation in Northern Ireland where there are parts of the Ukraine where a lot of Russian-speaking people live and people that moved there from other parts of the Soviet Union who, um, you know, are nostalgic for those days. But it's only a couple of regions, you know, Donetsk, Crimea, th those places, right? It's not widespread. So looking back at some of the QAnon videos from yesteryear, it seems like ages ago, doesn't it? The Trump era, the first year of COVID and so on. So once again, we have this theme of um, kids being rescued from underground tunnels. These are trafficked for the child um, sex rings, um, Hollywood and all the rest of it, and adrenochrome, I suppose. How true this is, you know, when do you see any proof? Ask yourself this. If this was true, you would see some live footage that somebody had taken I mean, this is just absolute crap, if you ask me. Yet people believe it. <laughs> and they believe that we've got to a certain stage in the underground war against the deep state. I mean, no. Who believes this crap? Hillary Clinton's arrest. There's, there's actually people like this psychic um, that says the Queen has previously been arrested and she's going to be re-arrested. What planet are you on, woman? 
that, you know, these things are complete fantasy and they get people just to sit on their sofas munching their Watsits or Cheetos doing nothing because they believe somebody else is sorting everything out. So who are the bad actors apart from Dick Van Dyke, Mary Poppins? Well, it's the usual suspects, really. You've got Pervy Parkey with Becky locked in the wardrobe in this particular screenshot by the looks of it. Dr. Charlie Ward, the fat knacker. Look at him. He's probably broadcasting live from um, Costa Brava or wherever it is that he lives. Look at him. He's not even a proper doctor, although he'll tell you that um, he put it on a, like a parking ticket or something and ever since then it's been on his documents but he could get it taken off couldn't he you could do that charlie but you don't want to because you kind of like the prestige don't you liar ah <sighs> if you want to know more about charlie ward incidentally on one of his latest videos where he's talking about the casario mafia in ukraine <laughs> right it, he talks about the importance of fathers to their sons and you'll notice in this screenshot, there's somebody there called Glenn Ward, who is Charlie Ward's son. And we'll tell you exactly how big of a bullshitter Charlie is. Um, there's a channel here called M Seeker of Truth. Go to his channel. There's loads of stuff there about Charlie Ward. It would really be stupid of me to try and do anything reinventing the wheel as far as Charlie Ward goes. Just can't be bothered, right? I've got ironing to do. So <laughs> I don't go, I'm not going to do that. Um, anyway, you can go and watch that. He's got some stuff on um, Simon Parks, which mostly is stuff I've already covered. Uh, he's a bit of a weirdo. I said something to him as a joke, and now he thinks I'm like some sort of troll. I don't know. It's just got no sense of humor anyway. Uh, the other thing, of course, <laughs> I noticed when I was looking at, at Charlie Ward's stuff is that he's actually got an interview with David Icke. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sad about David Icke. He's probably the one that I'm saddest about being a shill because uh, he was one of the first people that I started reading and watching his videos. And probably about 60% of what he says is actually true. He's one of the most credible people. But if you think about it, he was a good choice for the intelligence agencies. He was someone that was already in the public eye. Um, he has always lacked credibility from the minute he went on the Wogan show. I mean, who, if they have some sort of bizarre spiritual awakening, gets invited onto one of the nation's biggest chat shows? How does that happen? And you can spot one of these shills immediately because one minute you're watching them on BitChute and the next minute they're in the Daily Mail. It's like that. You won't see me in the Daily Mail, guys, because, you know, nobody cares about what I'm saying, basically, because I'm what I'm saying is on the money. Well, I think so anyway. Anyway, that's it, folks. As usual, I'm not going to try and tempt you into subscribing. I don't earn any money out of my channel. I don't care about how many subscribers I've got. There's no ego involved in this for me. Uh, just when I see things that I think are making people look ridiculous following that and uh, you know, it's pretty hurtful, the things that are being said against the Ukrainian people at the moment. So I'm not trying to virtue signal. Um, if you look on my channel, you'll see that about 10 years ago, I went to Russia. And on the tour that I went on, there were quite a lot of Ukrainian people with us, uh, particularly the women that did the cooking for us. And uh, they made very nice borscht, by the way. So, um, you know, I went uh, for an archaeological purpose. And that's that. Anyway, guys, I'll uh, love you and leave you. Tati bye.